So hi folks, welcome back to Vito's Astro Forum. If you're looking for that first lightweight, easy to use, uh, low maintenance telescope for astrophotography, definitely consider a refractor or a lens-based telescope. Let me, let me show you one. This was actually my first telescope. It's a, it's a Celestron 102 SLT telescope. Lightweight, easy to use, it doesn't require any maintenance. And look at that baby, it's just stop, incredible. Stop, huh? stop right that. Who's that? Ho ho ho, a, a stop right that, chap. Whoa, who are you? I am Sir Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, wow, it's great to have you on the show. <laughs> yes, it's a great honor. For you, of course. <laughs> yeah, let's get to the point. I just wanted to note that my good late colleague Galileo Galilei used his god-awful refractor lens-based telescope to study craters at the moon and the moons of Jupiter. And he complained in his scientific writings all the time about uh, the lens acting like a prism. So it was this dispersing the white light into the different colors of the rainbow and that, that made it very hard for him to actually and accurately observe these objects. Oh, Sir Isaac Newton, I think you might be right because when I was imaging with my Celestron 102 Acroma telescope, I noticed a lot of false colors, a lot of color fringing and also astigmatism in my astrophotography picture. Uh, so Sir Isaac Newton, what would you suggest? <laughs> yes, I would of course recommend you to take one of my Newtonian mirror-based telescopes. When pointing one of my telescopes at the night sky, you get a perfect color picture. And yes, they are a little bit heavier and larger, and you do need to collimate them. But that's a small price to pay for getting good color pictures of the night sky, isn't it? Ja, Entschuldigung, aber das ist doch Quatsch. <laughs> I'm getting kind of confused here, so who are you? Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> Aber natürlich, ich bin Ernst Karl Abba. I'm German optical scientist. I was working for Zeiss Optical Systems in Jena, Deutschland in the late 19th century. Whoa! Respect, dude. Zeiss, isn't that that multi-billion dollar company in optical systems that's still around today? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's stimmt, that's stimmt. I have developed the first microscope that was completely free of false color. Uh, I needed ten, uh, ten different lens elements, but it was a fantastic objective. So, yeah, anyway, can you tell us something about a good quality refractor telescope? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sicher. Aber uh, ich muss nach Hause gehen. I, I have to go home uh, to spend time with my family. Uh, I already worked for eight hours, acht Stunden. Uh, okay, dude, whatever. Uh, but didn't you have 16 hour work days in the 19th century? Ha, aber nein, ich war one of the first employers to introduce the 8 hour work days. So, 8 Stunden, 8 hours working, 8 hours relaxing or mit, mit Familie and 8 hours resting. And uh, yeah, my employees, uh, my uh, Mitarbeiter at Zeiss, they were uh, one of the most creative and innovative people because they were so well rested. They were recovered to start a new Arbeitstag, uh, to start a new working day. Okay, okay, respect dude, but before you go home, can you give us a little bit of advice about what is a good quality lens-based telescope, a refractor telescope to image the night sky? <laughs> nein, 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 danke. Ich muss nach Hause gehen. Aber uh, be before I go, you have to look up the Abbe number of the glass in your refractor telescope. Meine Abbe number. It will give you an idea about the quality glass that is used in your lens-based telescope. What? Your Abbey number or Eben number? Uh, what is that exactly? Oh, <laughs> the dumbest man, don't you know what my Abbe number is? Well, uh, it's a formula I have developed to calculate the material's dispersion of light with higher values of V indicating lower dispersion where V equals the refractive indices of the Fraunhofer D minus 1 divided by the refractive indices of the Fraunhofer F minus the Fraunhofer D wavelengths. Ah, so okay, I didn't completely get that, but can you tell us something about the kind of glass, the kind of material my lens should be made of in a refractive telescope to get a good quality, a good color corrected image of the night sky? Ach, 
<laughs> Unglaublich! Okay, okay. A chromatic dispersion relates to the separation of colors like in a prism and it leads to undesirable chromatic aberration or what you call false colors. Uh, in order to eliminate this effect, I have tested many types of glass and uh, other materials in terms of their chromaticity. Uh, for example, uh, a chief achromat telescope is made of crown and flint glass uh, with a very low AB number. Uh, that is why you have these false colors and what you call astigmatism in your picture. Uh, you need a low dispersion glass with high AB number for good color images. Uh, for instance, I tested fluoride and phosphate lenses and I was überrascht uh, by their extremely low dispersion rate. Whoa, Ernst, thank you so much for that interesting talk about Abbey numbers. Uh, let me show you a second telescope I want. Oh, can you see it? <laughs> so uh, this is my second lens-based telescope. It has three glass elements in it and one of those elements is actually called FPL53. And that stands for fluorophosphate if I'm correct. Anyway, it has a very high Abbey number and a very low dispersion uh, rate actually. And I made some beautiful pictures with that, this telescope actually. You can see some of them behind me. So, should I just inform my astro friends to get like uh, a three element, a triplet refractor telescope with FPL 53 glass? Whoa, whoa, hold your horses right there, dude. Uh, okay, so who is this? Well, I'm an impersonator of Vic Maris, uh, the president of Stellar View, with over 25 years of experience uh, producing telescopes for guys like you who want to observe and photograph the night sky. Whoa, impersonator of Vic Maris, you have a very interesting American accent, but can you tell us something about why FPL 53 would not be the only option for us uh, who want to buy a lens-based telescope to photograph the night sky? Uh, well, well, sure, FPL 53 stands for fluorophosphate glass, which is great to eliminate false colors in refracted telescopes, but there are at least three other magnificent glass types with the same level of performance, if you ask me. Oh, whoa, that sounds interesting. Uh, tell us more, Vic. Well, well, sure. Take for instance the FCD100 glass. That's a dense fluoro crown type of glass. It has an Abbey number of 95.10. Or take the CAF2 glass. That's a glass made out of calcium fluoride uh, with an Abbey number of 94.99. And of course we have O'Hare's FPL55 glass with a number of 94.6. Well, all of these types are basically super low dispersion glass types and they really stand apart from other types of glass like O'Hare's FPL 51 glass which scores 81.54 or Scott Bohr's silicon glass with an Abbey number of 63.6 .6, which is nice for visual but not really for astrophotography. Whoa Vic thanks so much. Um, so if I understand you correctly as long as any refractor telescope has one of these super low dispersion type of glasses you talked about like FCD 100, FPL 53 or CAF 2 uh, we should be fine and we should be getting high quality images of the night sky. Is that correct? Well, dude, I wouldn't exactly put it like that. I mean, you also have to take a look at the number of glass elements used as well as the build quality. I mean, uh, we hand built these telescopes, but some of these mass produced telescopes might not have the same quality. Well, okay, Vic Impersonator, could you enlighten us? So the one used by Galileo Galilei to study the moon and the moons of Jupiter, it simply only had one lens and it suffered from terrible chromatic aberration, you know. And most modern day telescopes, they use at least two glass elements and they are called achromatic dublets. Well, these achromats, they bring two wavelengths into focus, usually the red and the blue part of the light spectrum. Well, like I said before, apochromatic lenses, they are designed to be a truly color free so they bring three different types uh, three different colors into focus on the same plane like your camera sensor and that's typically the red green and blue part of the light spectrum now most apochromatic telescopes they are made of three different lens elements but with my experience i have been able to use some super low dispersion glass i talked about earlier and made like doublets so two only using two lens elements 
and those doublets, they perform very close to apochromatic standards, you know. And finally, we have super achromats, meaning that in addition to red, green and blue, uh, we are also able to focus on the near infrared. All of those wavelengths can be focused on the same plane. Isn't that incredible? So impersonator of Vic, you do sound a lot like me. <laughs> but anyway, um, can you tell us a little bit more about those super low dispersion glass types and how you're able to use them? So dude, are you are you actually accusing me of being Dutch? I mean, come on. Oh. Anyway, let's continue here. Those affordable acromet telescopes are often made of flint glass and a sculptor silicon crown. And that's fine for visual, but not for astrophotography. To, to be able to do some astrophotography, you need some super low dispersion glass like FVL53 or FCD100 I talked about. And if you pair that glass with a good mating glass like a borosilicon crown in front and a lanthanum element in the back, you will have an excellent telescope for astrophotography if you ask me. And I also found that airspace telescopes as compared to oil-based telescopes, uh, they are a slightly better in terms of color correction. Uh, but like I said, the build quality matters most, you know. If you build a, a well built, if you build a doublet a really, really well with two glass elements and you compare it to a substandard build triplet, uh, I mean that doublet will outperform that triplet anytime when you take a picture of the night sky. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you learned something today about Abbey numbers and lens elements in refractor telescopes. Um, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And if you want me to stay awake and keep on producing these silly videos, uh, you can also join the channel for $2.99. And by the way, if you're really interested in the quality of glass and also other uh, indicators beside the Abbey number, go to refractiveindex.info. You can find a lot of information about glass quality there. So that's all folks. I hope you have some clear skies and see you in the next video.